Hello, welcome to Electronics Education. I'm Vincent Chan. Today, we are going to uh, present an up and operational amplifiers and integrator. Operational amplifiers integrator, inverting and non inverting. Let me start with the inverting configuration. As you can see on the left hand side is the inverting amplifier. The close loop gain is decided by the two resistor components. So let's try to generalize this inverting amplifier from the left, left hand side to the right hand side where you see the inverting configuration which is composed of the one operational amplifier, the same amplifier and two general impedances. So then the closed loop transfer function on the left hand side is the closed loop gain. So on the right hand side is called closed loop transfer function is decided by the two general impedance. So now if we replaced Z1 by a resistor, but Z2 by a capacitor, then in turn uh, it's going to be uh, an inverting integrator. So therefore the closed loop transfer function is if you do the S domain analysis, then it's this. It's negative one inverting. So negative one divided by SCR. So now frequency domain analysis. So once you uh, once we get the transfer function, then we should replace S by J omega. So S represents a complex frequency. Omega represent the physical frequency. So then the closed loop transfer function, transfer function becomes a complex. Then we can define the time, the inverse of the time constant as a frequency called omega zero, omega zero. So then the magnitude of the transfer function can be expressed uh, as a simple form in terms of omega zero, right? So pay attention to the negative sign, negative 20 log omega divided by omega zero. So now let's try to plot its magnitude frequency response. Horizontal is frequency axis, vertical is magnitude in terms of decibel. So now, so how are you gonna, gonna plot this? It's straightforward, right? So negative 20 log, so on the log scale, it should be a straight line like this. It should be a straight line like this. So again, omega zero is defined. I just try to make the connection between the left hand side. And the, so the new parameter omega zero is defined by the time constant on the left hand side. So I was I was saying it should be a straight line on the log scale. Log scale. So the slope of the straight line is the negative is, is the negative 20, 20 what? It's negative 20, 20 decibel per decade of frequency. Okay? Negative 20 decibel and per decade of frequency. And also you see another pop up is the omega zero, right? So when omega equals omega zero, which is the inverse of the time constant, then one, right? Log one equals zero decibel. So omega zero also represent when the frequency, when the gain falls to the one, the unity. So it's the unity gain frequency, unit gain frequency, when the, the gain equals one, zero decibel. So now we're gonna change from, move from the frequency domain analysis to 
the time domain analysis. Now, so you see, see the symbol variable has been changed from the capital V to a lowercase v. In the frequency domain, we used to use the capital letter. And then on the time domain, we so for the conventional um, uh, system, we use the lowercase, lowercase v as function of time. So now the VO, uh, because of the virtual ground on the inverting terminal. So VO is actually negative the capacitor drop, the capacitor voltage, right? So how are you going to deal with the capacitor in the time domain? We know in the frequency domain, you have learned, you just change the C into a 1 over SC as an impedance, right? But in the time domain, how are you going to deal with this in the time domain? So let us let me quickly sum up some of the capacitor basics, either from the physics, physics or from network theory, all right? So two characteristics that you need to know about the capacitor, uh, two characteristics. Number one is the definition of current. So the current is what? The current is the charge divided by time. In other words, how are you going to watch a traffic? So at intersecting point on a crossroad. So you, sit, you stand there and count within 30 minutes, within an hour. So how many cars passing by, right? So now you change, you, you change, you replace the car by charge. So for the current, so it's like the traffic. So within a certain period of time in the denominator, so how many charges passing through, passing by? So that's the definition of current. Charge divided by time. So charge passing by per unit of time. So Q equals I, I represent current times time, T. And the second characteristic you need to know about the capacitor is the capacitor is defined as the charge divided by voltage. So if you apply one voltage, so how much charges will be accumulated upon the capacitor? So if you apply the same voltage, then you can accumulate abundant level charges, then you means that you have the big capacitor, all right? Big capacitor. So Q equals C times V. C is divided as Q divided by V. So that's the two very important characteristic when it comes to capacitor. But in physics, uh, most likely uh, we deal with the DC part, right? DC which means the variable is independent of time. But in the network or the AC, alternating current or electronics, the most of the time you deal with the current. In this kind of time domain analysis, it's dependent of time. So which means you have to apply the concept of calculus differential. So see, look at the slide. So the differential charge equals I times differential T equals C times differential V. So this is very, very important. So I said Q equals I times T. Q also equals C times V. Then you apply the concept of differential. Then it comes two very important formula. The first one is capacitor current. It's C dV dt. It's a C then differential voltage divided by differential time, all right? So how, within a certain period of time, how the, the charges, the voltage will be changes. If the slope, the voltage change slope is, so it's about the slope. It's proportional to the slope of voltage curve or voltage waveform. And then the second one is capacitor voltage. So voltage is gonna be what? 
be the integration of current divided by capacitor. So those two formula are very, very important when it comes to the capacitor analysis in the time domain. That's what we need right now. So now we keep this and bring back the original circuit, then the rest of the analysis, I think you can do this. It's very easy, right? The tough part is how I'm gonna deal with the capacitor voltage in the time domain. So you can simply just plug this formula into the red highlight and then replace I, I, look at the circuit on the left hand side, Ohm's law, right? Virtual ground. Then you will get this integration formula. So VO is proportional to inverse, negative inverting. Then the integration of time, the integration of time, the input integration of time. So this is the inverting integrator. The in ver integration of the input signal with respect time, inverting integrator. So now, so I'm going to teach you a little bit, move a little bit further. So now uh, we have completed the inverting, inverting version. So now I'm going to teach you the non-inverting version, the non-inverting integrator. So the previous slide, there is a negative sign when it comes to the integration, right? So it's called inverting integrator. So now let's do a non-inverting integrator. But to I want I, I'm asking you try to come up with a circuit to realize this transfer function, the integration transfer function, but without a negative sign. It's the non-inverting integrator. But as the title says, only one operational amplifier is allowed. Only one operational amplifier is allowed. So I wanted to stop to think about maybe three minutes. So how are you gonna design with, how are you gonna realize this transfer function? What kind of circuit can help you realize this transfer function? Let me pause. Can you get it? Of course, I think the intu most intuitive way to realize this is use the previous one, right? The pre previous, the inverting version, and you cascaded another inverter like this. Or oh, not inverter, inverting amplifier, because with a gain of two, negative two, right? So this is, but I said, the requirement is only one operational amplifier is allowed. Let me remind you, uh, do you still remember this? What's this circuit called? It could be, it's the conditional differential amplifier, right? What's the condition to turn this circuit into a differential amplifier? Ratio. When the ratio, the relationship is satisfied, one over two equals three over four, then it's gonna be the differential amplifier, right? Right, okay, so now, Let's turn this into a differential first. See, the slide changed. So now it's one, two, three, four. Now it's the one, two, one, two. All right? So it's already become a differential. The condition has been met. Then what? Then we do this. Then we do this, see? You, you, you just said why, you just put V1 as grounded. And then you turn the R2 into a capacitor. 
Z2 as a capacitor, and Z1, the R1, as the R divided by 2, like this. You got it? That's it. This is the non-inverting amplifier which can realize the transfer function of 2 over S R C. So we are now approaching the end of the lecture. I hope you received something uh, from and also the circuit concept from this lecture. Thanks for watching.